Aloha from Maui, Hawaii, and welcome to a Maui Music Moment. I'm your host, Randall Rosepond. Our program intends to inspire, educate, and entertain you with an intimate glimpse into the sights, sounds, and minds of some of Maui's most unique musicians, songwriters, entertainers, and who knows what else. Aloha, and welcome to a Maui Music Moment. I'm exceptionally thrilled today because my guest is George Kahumoku Jr., native Hawaiian planter and master, mentor, and teacher of Hawaiian music. It's my honor to welcome you to the show. Oh, thank you so much, Randall, for Aloha. having me here. Aloha. Thank you, George. Okay. Um, I'm thrilled. Uh, I've had the, the uh, honor of sharing a couple stages with you where I got to hear you do your thing. And, uh, yeah, thank you. You're the real deal. Yes, oh, thank Uncle. you. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's great to have you on the show. Now, my first question that I ask guests is, um, A, were you born here? Did you move here? How long have you been here? Okay. Well, I'm actually was born and raised in the south uh, corner coast, a place called Kelia, uh -huh. and raised with my great-grandparents um, and 26 cousins in the same household. Oh. And um, we're an extended family. When we sat down to eat, between 50 and 100 people. Oh my God. All our, uh, my dad and all his brothers actually worked on the atomic bomb. So really? they're, they're, yeah, in the, in the forties and the fifties and all that. Yet. So unfortunately they all died young. They all got radiation poisoning, you know? So oh. that's, that's, that's that, their, that story there. So I grew up basically with an extended family of um, 26 cousins, uh, mostly aunties, all the uncles all passed out. You know, I mean, what happened when they went down there the bombing the, the fish would come floating up. So being Hawaiians, they didn't want to waste it. So they, they ate all the fish, you know, oh, and they got man. radiation poisoning in the body. Yeah. Oh my God! They all died before they were 50 years old, all our parents, yeah. So it was raised by our grandparents, great grandparents and aunties like that. Big family yeah. life, yeah. 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 And, and, then, then, and everybody played music, everybody played music. And we had, my great grandfather was, um, he was like the haku or like the chief for our, for our area. So he raised enough uh, food to sustain uh, about a thousand people. Wow. You know, I mean, we had uh, cattle, goat, sheep, taro, um, bananas. And we also oh. fished, uh, went opelo fishing and uh, hunting and all like that. So, and it was always abundance around us. So that's the kind of, and uh, at each of these celebrations, they would, um, of course, you know, there'd be the, the night you're born, you'd have a celebration. Uh -huh. It's called this rites of passage in the one year baby party. Then when you get married, then you dedicate a canoe or house. And then, you know, when you die, there's a funeral. Then there's another one, one year after you die. So these, all these are, are opportunities or rites of passage that we would celebrate with food. And along with the food, of course, is the music. Yeah, yeah. Now you were and probably I, young when you started playing. Yeah, I started on uh, ukulele when I was about three until about eight. And then at eight years old, I, my fingers were big enough so I could play the, the guitar. Yes. Uh -huh. So I played slacky guitar and slack. Actually, I played slacky ukulele before I learned how to play regular ukulele. Oh, mm -hmm. see, I'm not familiar. I didn't know that there was a slacky. Well, there's all kinds of tunings. My dad yeah. used to play over 100 tunings in the oh, ukulele wow. here, and so I can play. He was your teacher? Well, he was. Yeah. He was hardly there because you know he was always. They would go off for two years and then he'd come back. So I was really raised by my great grandparents and my grandparents and my cousins was the ones who taught me a lot. Oh. I mean, I, would, I, I knew what his music was like, but there was, uh, you know, people like, because I grew up with 26 cousins, my oldest c c cousin, he was two years older than me, Michael Naihe was the one that mentored me. Uh -huh. yeah. And then I mentored the, the younger ones, you know, my cousin uh, Sula and my uh, other cousin Walter Boy. Like that. So, you know, everybody teach each other. So the thing is, if you're learning at the same time you're teaching, you, know, you become better, I think, at the art. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what brought you to Maui and oh, when did oh, you come to yeah. Maui? Well, I played, I uh, actually start my, my background is I, my years, I went to school in Oakland and Berkeley. Oh. Uh, late 60s, 68 to 74. My degree is actually in uh, sculpture. I used to cast bronze. Really? I'm on, I, uh, and my grandfather was a canoe maker. And, um, you know, we, 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 so I used to carve a lot. We made a lot of poi boards and um, poi pounders, you know, carving with stone and wood. But then I learned how to cast bronze. I, I used to draw a lot. And um, so my degree is in art. I got a master's in sculpture and wow. fine arts, yeah. 
Then I got a teaching credential, but then when I came back to the Big Island, no job. So I ended up, um, but I had skills. I knew yeah. how to weld. I was a drilling welder on the Alaskan pipeline during the summers. I worked oh, on wow. the Transamerica building, catching rivets. You know, I worked Holy. on the Barry Rapid Transit too. I did all kinds of things, you know. And then, uh, and then when I went back to um, the Big Island, I ended up working as, as a boiler maker and a pipe fitter in the plantation. We shut down the, the mills, you know. Mm -hmm. Those days, the sugar prices were high, so they, they ran us. We work 18-hour shifts, you know, wow. day, seven days that's a week. All, that's a heck of a day. Years. And then when the, the bottom brought, we dropped off the sugar, then um, I went back to teaching again. I also taught in Berkeley. I taught at risk kids mostly, you know. Oh. Started my own school there. I was, I, I was one of the youngest. I was on the Alameda County Arts Commission. I was the youngest commissioner at 22 years old. Really? Oh my God. I had God. my own gallery. You know, it was a pretty, you know, shaking a mover in those days. I was farming, ranching. Uh, I, I used to lease about 300 acres of McNuts. Uh, oh. I, I planted 200 acres of uh, I'm a real farmer, farmer. Wow. I had a 6,000 acre spread that I had cattle. I used to ship cattle to uh, Canada and they'd finish it off. Also raised alfalfa hay, tea leaves, coffee, you name it. Oh my I gosh. Coffee, um, um, mangoes, 20 acres of mangoes, 50 acres of guava. Wow. And then I, I, actually, I, and I built houses for all my employees, you know. We, uh, so all of them, oh, which was my, my family. So we, put about, we had 19 families working on all our various farms. And then. Um, also ran the slaughterhouse, so I had meat, I had pork, so I fed everybody. Everybody got paid 500 a month, each family. Wow. Plus they get pork and beef. So my, you know, the, the start of my life really is about sustainability and using our tribal skills uh, to yeah. survive in today's world. Yeah. And the music actually uh, enhanced it because, that, you know, what you expense is music, one set of strings. I, I used to change my strings once every five years. If, the old Hawaiian style, you know, no book, uh, no fix. <laughs> so I, my tuning is so low. Yeah. So my tuning so loud, I used to play in E flat all the time. Uh -huh. That was my strongest voice in E flat. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. so I, the, the strings would never break. Wow. Yeah. So, and, and so this first song you're going to do solo. Yeah, it's, is it's just it's, like it's, e in, it's it's in honor of the. Um, okay, after the cowboys came, they brought the horses with the guitars. So it's in honor of the horses that they brought over, and because the whole the whole show that we do in Lahaina is actually uh, Naliu Maui's. A story about the horses and you know the pau riders and uh -huh. the roping and uh, and and the hula associated with that. Queen Emma, you know, was honored. She's a uh, they started Queen's Hospital in Honolulu, uh -huh. but she would have these big uh, you know celebrations and parades, and that's how the pau riders got started. You know, it's it's a whole kind of an interesting history. It's incredible. And it's incredible. So I've been participating with them for about a year now. So that's why I, I wrote the song about a year ago for. For that, for that, that's that's what right Nalio right. Omawi, yeah, the, the story of yeah. Omawi. Okay. Well, we're gonna give you a listen. Okay. And the folks are at home are gonna Himili watch Nalio, it. Himili Nalio, yeah, Himili Nalio. Himili no Nalio, Emma kana ke ali.
Welcome back. We are still here with George Kahumoku Jr. George, it's a pleasure having you on our show. On behalf of everybody at Akaku, Larry John, our producer, Carl Rosicki, our videographer, and myself, thank you so much for oh, joining us. Thank you. The biggest honor for me now is you're going to allow me to play with you on one of your songs. Oh, 36 mile marker, yeah. I used to live um, in Honokaha Valley, and that's, that's, that's the, you know, there is no uh, street address or anything. So that's, that's the, the place I lived at, Samka Ice House. Uh -huh. So the, 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 you know, you go over the river and there's this market that says 36 mile market. That's, that's, so that's where, where you are. Live. So it's sort of like a musical journey going through, um, you know, uh, Napili and all like that, uh -huh. and coming across the cattle on the road. and It's so gorgeous there. out there. Yeah. So thank you for letting me share that song. Oh, it's our honor. Okay. Um, we're going to play that song for you right now. 36 Mile Marker by George Kahumoku Jr. <laughs>
Jesus para te procurar. diverse in so many things mm. and um, you know I mainly know you from your music right most people know yeah. about me my, about my music and um, not very many people know that you know you know part of whole, the music the music is probably about 10% of Hawaiian culture mm -hmm. the other part of it has to do with uh, you know food and sustainability and you know I, I we, now that I call them tribal ways you know and uh, the thing that a lot of Hawaiians have to do, even you know, even part of my family, some of my cousins, even my, my eldest brother is in jail because they don't know how to, you know, to to cope. To me, the the biggest challenge that we have as Hawaiians is like, how can we still participate in modern the modern world yet still hang on to our cultural values? Now, George, can can you mention a little bit of your mentoring? I know you you have a regular slack key show that you do on the west side. Well, well about twenty years ago, my my um, my son and I um, played for uh, TS uh, Restaurants. Mm -hmm. We op actually opened up the Hula Grill. Um, uh, Peter Merriman was actually my good friend. I used to sell him vegetables on the Big Alley. That's ah, where he came from. I love Peter. And, and Peter worked for uh, he had his own restaurant, but he worked for Monarchy for a while. Then he worked with Manalani. So I used to supply with all the, in fact, I used to supply herbs for that whole coast. Oh. You know, while, while I was playing music and doing the breaks, I'd say, oh, what's that? Oh, it's tarragon. I never heard of it. You know, we, in our Hawaiian yeah. culture, we never use vasos and stuff like that. Yeah. So I said, oh, how much is that? Oh, that's like 20, the tarragon was like 35 bucks an ounce. I'm going to go I'm that. Call <laughs> that <stuff> <laughs> <happy>. <laughs> Whatever yeah. was our expensive stuff, you know, and, it, and of course, basil. And, so I supplied almost that whole Kohala coast for almost 20 years. I would come and play music. And then drop off vegetables. And then when I'm going home, I go gather all the garbage that they throw away and then feed them to my pigs. Oh, and oh, so yeah, yeah. yeah. About 1,200 pigs, too, yeah. See, so and that's a, wise, and that's where the earth is now. I think yeah. you're absolutely right. We do need to recycle, recycle reuse, recycle, and reuse. reduce, yeah. Yeah. And so, so then in getting back, so I played at Monarchia Beach from 73, 74, all into 92. Yeah, yeah almost yeah. 20, 20 years. And then they closed for renovation. 
So when he calls for renovation, I was invited by the Western Maui because he was a Western mm -hmm. Mauna Kea. But this guy, Steve Shallot, he was the assistant general manager at Mauna Kea maybe six years before. And he loved the music. Everybody here was playing reggae. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, the other island music, but not the real Hawaiian stuff. Yeah. And we came from a traditional background. So that's what we did. We ended up playing um, at Mauna Kea. And then they, when they closed for re renovation, that's brought me over to Maui. Ah. And right away, I noticed my health got better because, you know, where I was located, we were stuck in that, you know, out of vogue all the time. Yeah, yeah. So I was, had he, he, And especially really, with asthma. Asthma yeah. and stuff like that. So my health got better, so I decided to stay. So I, I ended up staying here. Ah. I, so I, I gave we're all my, lucky or for I, it. I, I gave all my assets to all my workers, you know, like uh -huh. the Filipino um, woman who worked for me, but then got the 300 acres of McNutts, gave the, you know, the... What 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 is it? The coffee lands to somebody else, uh -huh. and I, I sold some stuff, and then you know just just gave everything to everybody, all the workers. My God, yeah. bless your heart. Man. Yeah. So so Back you know today. since I've been here, uh, I've had a show at Napili Kai. It's been going almost for f 13 years, and I'm, for my show, we've been nominated for uh, seven Grammys. We brought them four for Best Hawaiian Music. Uh -huh. And then then I started doing about a year ago. I started doing this show uh, called Naliu Maui. It's a story of the horse. It said Hoki Q Road. I was invited to play Slacky. And the thing is, when they started doing a show, and you know, I, 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 I was raised before I even rode a car, I, I rode a horse. horse. We had a Jimmy Boy and, and donkeys and everything. My dad was a party old. Actually, he broke horses for McCandless Ranch on the big island. Oh. So I said, okay, like, so I, I decided to write a song for that. You know, so you got, you know, basically the. You know, in 1793, the cowboys came. I mean, actually, the George Vancouver dropped off a bunch of cattle on the Big Island, killed uh -huh. Kelly Kobe. They built, put a kapu, they let them go crazy. And in less than 30 years, there's thousands and thousands of cattle on the Big Island. So in the 1830s, uh, George, um, not George Vancouver, but Samuel Parker talks the king, King Commander the Third at the time, to bring over the Spanish speaking cowboys. And they teach, us, yeah, yeah. To, to, they teach us how to manage a cattle, and actually they start roping the cattle, they swim them out to the boats, and then actually lift them up to the belly of the ship. And they were shipping them to California, they're making salt meat and all that for the gold rush happening oh, in California. Wow. So, so we have a, and, and at the time it was, you know, actually it was, it was still a part of Mexico at that time. Really? Yeah, in the 1830s, yeah. And then, um, so our family, um, like, and by day they teach us how to manage the cattle, but at the night they bust out the guitars, you know. Uh -huh. They had a guitar, they played the bass, they had a six string cat cut, played the rhythm, mm -hmm. a four string tenor guitar, they played the lead. You, see, you can still see that in Marachi brands. So yeah. There's three guitars making that one big Spanish sound. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, when they left the islands, they forgot to teach us Hawaiians how to tune these things. So what we did is we combined three guitars into one, slacking the strings in open tuning, uh -huh. and that's how Slacky was born. Yeah. Oh, hi. Well, that's been our show for today. Uh, once again, it's a thrill to have you with us here, George. George Kahumoku, Jr., thank you for sharing everything. Uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, well, I've been really blessed to, uh, you know, being able to get the music from my Greek grandparents and my parents and my cousins. So one of the reasons that I, I keep the music going uh, is through mentoring is so that the next generation can learn Absolutely. about our Hawaiian culture as, as well as our music. Thank you for uh, having me here. Mahalo. <laughs> Mahalo. Thank you. Aloha. We'll Aloha. see you next time.